Hi and welcome, Max Mathias here. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about supply as part of the demand and supply of economics. Uh, what I would recommend is if you haven't already, I would actually watch the demand video first. And the reason why is that what you'll notice is that there are a lot of things um, that are going to be similar between these two videos. I think demand is a little bit easier to start because we, for most of our lives, have been consumers. So kind of getting the uh, what we call economic intuition behind those is a little bit easier to grasp than supply. But if you don't want to or you already know what you're talking about, this video uh, does have enough to be self-contained. So let's get started. So let's imagine I am able to, through my computer screen, buy all of your phones, right? So if you could sell me your cell phone right now, um, I'm going to basically have a table below that represents prices I'd be willing to buy it for. If I was in a classroom, I would be you know, taking kind of a poll of the students. Obviously, I can't do that here, so I just made up a table full of numbers. So the idea here is that if I offered you, say, $0 for your phone, I assume no one would want to sell it to me, right? That makes sense. Why give away your phone for free? If I paid $250 for your phone, let's say 25 of you would be willing to sell, uh, $500, 50 right? You get the idea going down. So those quantities in the right-hand column, again, are just the number of you who would be willing to sell me your phone at that particular price that I'd be offering. So what we want to do here is take this table, and uh, translate it into a graph. So we are gonna have our two axes right there. Uh, the vertical axis price, which a lot of times you'll see me just abbreviate with a P, and then quantity, which you'll see me abbreviate with a Q, is on the horizontal axis. So what we're gonna do here is go point by point, right? So at zero dollars, zero of you want to sell it to me, we're gonna plop a point down right there. At $250, I'm assuming 25 of you wanna sell it to me, I'll plop a point right there. At $500, 50 of you want to, so I'm gonna start speeding things up here. We'll plop a point. At $750, uh, it's 100 of you. And then if I'm offering $1,000 to buy your phone, let's assume 150 of you want to do that. So now we have points for each of these individual things. The last step is basically just to play connect the dots here, right? To connect them, and then we're gonna label that our supply curve. So you just drew your first supply curve. So give yourself a pat on the back. Wasn't that easy? Right, that's the general idea of what supply curve is, right? It's just, you know, if I could go around asking every single person in the world how much they'd be willing to sell, you know, um, any and every good at any and every price, I'd be able to accurately map supply curves for, you know, every good in the world. Obviously, that's not feasible, but you get the general idea behind what we're trying to do here. So let's talk about, well, what is supply, right? We drew a supply curve. I still don't know what it is. Supply is a relationship between the price of a good and the amount people are willing to sell at that price. So the way to think about it is it's kind of a map that tells you how much people want to sell at any and every price. This is in contrast to another definitional word is quantity supplied, which is how much people want to sell at a given price. If you are in a principles, uh, probably a principles of micro class, you may wonder why we as economists seem like such sticklers on the difference between these two. These are different things. I guarantee you, you will get tested on them. So the idea is that quantity supplied is a point on the supply curve, right? It's a point on the line. Supply is the line itself. So if I was to go back to that uh, supply graph we just drew on the last slide, that point right there, zero dollars and zero people willing to buy it, that is a quantity supplied. I told you a price I'd be willing to buy it for, zero dollars, none of you are willing to sell, right? Same thing, that 250 and 25, that is a quantity supplied. So is the 550, so is the 700, uh, sorry, 750 and 100, and then lastly, the 1,000 and 150. So each of those individual points is a particular quantity supplied, Right, and the way another way of thinking about it is that each kind of corresponding row in that table before is a quantity supplied. But as you can see highlighting here, us drawing that line to show the relationship is supply itself. So another way of thinking about it is supply is made up of an infinite amount of these particular quantities supplied. Right, it is the relationship between all of these quantities supplied at different prices. So let's generalize this a little bit, right? The supply curve that I've shown you on the prior slides, again, it's a specific example. I made the numbers up. We don't need to label every specific price quantity combo to be able to create a supply curve. So what does a generic supply curve look like? Well, we have our axes, right? P for price, Q for quantity, 
and then you just draw a line that looks something like that and label it with an S for supply, right? This is a straight line. It doesn't have to be, um, but a lot of times, you know, it's just simpler to draw a straight line. Let's make our life easy. So what similarity do you notice with the prior graphs? It's upward sloping, right? So what does upward sloping mean? It means that as the price of this good increases, people would be willing to sell more. This is where we get kind of this first um, thing that it's a little bit different than demand, right? So demand is downward sloping, and that has a pretty intuitive explanation for us, right? Good becomes cheaper. I'm willing to buy more of it. Yes. Why, as price goes up, am I willing to sell more of the things? Well, the idea is that, uh, and kind of, you know, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole here, but if you as a seller, right, we're assuming that there is some cost associated with you making this good, right? Whether it's actually like, you know, you're a business and you have to hire workers and whatever to make it, or if you're just a person, you know, say, making something in your garage, there's your time, right? So the idea is that if you are able to receive higher compensation for doing this, right, price goes up, not only would you be more likely to sell what you have, but it's worth it to actually go make more and sell more as well because you're going to earn more money at the end of it, right? Right? So the idea is that it's worthwhile to make more of whatever this particular good is to be able to sell them to take advantage of this higher price. That is why supply is upward sloping. That kind of uh, sentence, as price increases, people sell more. That's the law of supply, right? Price and quantity supplied, they either increase or they decrease together. So price goes up, quantity supplied goes up, more people are willing to sell. If price goes down, quantity supplied goes down too. Less people are willing to sell, right? It's harder for them to, you know, be making money to recuperate their costs at the end of this. So let's talk about shifting supply. So you may have been thinking this whole time, well, you know, or as you may have guessed, price isn't the only thing that determines how much a person or a business is willing to sell of a particular good, right? There's a lot of other things that go into that. What we have been assuming so far, kind of under the, you know, under the rug, so to speak, is that these other relevant factors are being held constant, and therefore we are isolating this effect of changes in price on quantity supplied, right? So I'm not letting those other things change. As soon as I do start letting those things change, it shifts the supply curve, right, to the left or to the right, thereby changing the relationship, Okay. So what shifts supply? Let's talk about some of these things. By the way, this is in no way a comprehensive list, nor is it in like an order of list of importance, right? These are things that I just thought of uh, kind of as they came to me. First is the number of sellers, right? So as more sellers enter the market, we assume supply increases and that is represented by a shift to the right. So an idea is, right, if it's just me buying phones, right, there's only, you know, so much that you potential people would be willing to sell. But as you get more and more, um, I'm sorry, as you, I'm not selling the phone here, I'm buying your phone. Um, but let's say I was asking one person to sell me their phone. Well, at that, you know, at the end of the day, no matter what I pay, the quantity supplied is one. As soon as I start asking more people, right, I ask a classroom full of students, I ask the Air Force Academy, I ask the state of Colorado, right, to sell me their phone then yeah, it makes sense that at any given price that I would be you know, willing to offer them, uh, I would expect more people to be willing to sell their phone. That is a shift to the right of supply. We'll draw those on the next slide, but you get the idea. Cost of inputs. So immediately think wages of workers, but there's a whole bunch of other things, right? Cost of machines, uh, cost of, you know, like if you're making, say, cars, right? Think about steel, right? You have to buy steel to make a car. The idea is that if that good becomes more costly produced, so if these inputs become more expensive, supply decreases or shifts to the left, right? So ultimately, if I have to pay my workers more, it's becoming more expensive for me to produce this good, I am going to make less of it. Supply shifts to the left. On the other hand, there's this is a vice versa as well. If the good becomes uh, cheaper to produce, I expect supply would increase or shift to the right. And then lastly, technology, this is kind of our uh, catch-all generic category here. Our idea is that as production technology gets better, we assume supply increases. If for some reason production technology got worse, supply would decrease. Uh, a great example of this is something like mechanized farming, right? Back in, you know, ancient times, medieval times, uh, it was, you know, people working on a farm with a plow and maybe some animals or whatever, their output wasn't that great. Now today we have all of these, you know, automated mechanized things 
in a very small amount of people are able to create, you know, a vast amount of uh, food for the rest of us, right? So that is a huge improvement in production technology. And you get the idea, supply increases, right? The supply of food uh, to the U.S. and to the world market has increased so much because of mechanized farming, right? That is one particular example. There's a whole bunch of other ones you can think about. Again, technology can be a little bit vague, um, but that is, I think, a really good example of, you know, production technology gets better, we assume supply increases. The one thing that does not shift supply is price, right? So why would price changing not shift supply? Well, the answer is it's already shown on the graph, right? A change in price is a movement along the supply curve, i.e. a change in quantity supplied. This is another thing. If you are taking a principles of micro class right now, we will ask you about this, right? There's, uh, you know, you may see something like, you know, which of the following does not shift supply? The answer is always price, right? And the reason for that is the graph we're looking at is price and quantity. Price moves, we just show it by moving somewhere else on the graph. So let's draw these supply shifts. We'll start with an increase in supply. So if we have our kind of generic supply curve there, right, our axes labeled PQ and then our uh, supply curve labeled S, an increase in supply, the way I always like to think of it, is you're literally dragging the supply curve to the right, right, to this new green curve. Here's another stickler thing, and I talk about this more in depth in the demand video, but I'll say it here as well. Get in the habit of saying shifts to the right or shifts out when you're talking about increases. If you're saying a shift down here, you're going to be really confused because a shift down, quote unquote, of demand is a decrease in demand, right? So it's really easy to get confused talking about increases or decreases if you're saying shift up or shift down. So if you're talking about increase in supply, say it shifts to the right. If you say shifts to the right, you'll always be correct whether you're talking about supply or demand. The idea now is that quantity supplied is higher at any price than it was before. So basically, if you can imagine drawing a horizontal line you know, on the blue line, it's say 10, now it's 20, right? So at any price, people are now willing to sell more uh, than they would have before. A decrease in supply is just the opposite, right? We're taking the supply curve and we're dragging it to the left, right? And again, this is an important thing. Don't say it shifts up. Get in the habit of saying supply shifts to the left or shifts in to uh, talk about these decreases in supply, good habit to get into. It's kind of my bugaboo when it comes to being a teacher, but uh, if you do this, you'll always be right. It's a good habit to get into. So quantity supplied now is lower at every price, right? Again, you draw that straight line at any given price that you could look at on that original blue supply curve. On the red one, people are buying less than they were before. So let's do a quick recap here of supply. Supply is a relationship between the price of a good and how much people want to sell that how much people want to sell is a quantity supplied, right? It's a point. So supply, again, is the relationship itself. It's the line. Quantity supplied is a point on the line. The idea is that as price increases, quantity supplied increases, right? So people want to sell more when a good is more expensive. This makes sense. That's also a vice versa, right? Also, if you want a quick hint on an exam or anything like that, if you are given a particular price, say $20, it's a quantity supplied. Right, for it to be quantity supplied, you gotta tell me the price. Supply is just the entire relationship. Sorry, beating a dead horse there, but want to help you. There are three broad things that shift supply. Obviously, there are uh, more. That was not a comprehensive list, but you get the idea. Price is not one of them, and that is another really important uh, element to get here. Right, a change in price is a movement along the supply curve. It is not a shift of the supply curve. Right, so. When price changes, quantity supply changes, right? We're moving along the curve, but if anything else is changing, that is a shift of the supply curve. All right, so with that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and if you got something out of it, please consider liking and or subscribing. Uh, if you have questions, comments about anything I talked about, or you, know, you want me to talk about another economic topic next, let me know, uh, but I will see you next time.